contender, making his way to the center ring. The number one contender for the world super heavyweight title. Stand the man like it is from Australia. He's going to be back with Anthony Elmore, the USA title holder. And the 12 two-minute rounds. And looking at this crowd, Richard Norton, it's not hard to see who they're going to be banking for tonight. Oh, what about this crowd? Are they even behind him? That's great, isn't it? Melbourne boy, that popular. That's what we want to see. Right behind him. Bob Jones, you've seen this guy overseas. You've seen him here in this country. What a reception. He calls himself the electrifying Amp Elmore. Anthony Amp Elmore doing some rap dancing. What about the entourage? <laughs> oh, oh. Is this the sort of thing that we're accustomed to seeing overseas, Bob Jones? This is how they do it in the United States. Not so much in Europe, but uh, it's all rock and roll and Hollywood style in the United States, especially in California. Well, Richard, not what I can't get to. This guy's got to be really psyched up to turn around and retain his world crowd. How much effect has that got on you? Doing what he's doing now, because his mind certainly could be on. Yeah, well, 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 ring. you heard him earlier in the way in I mean, the guy's just totally confident if you're going to believe every word he says. And whether half of that's to give him confidence in himself, I'm not sure. But uh, he certainly likes to put on his show, there's no doubt about that. Let's just hope he can back it up in the ring. Well, the show, uh, the show, I should say, still continues here as we uh, see the world's number one coming into the ring. Of course, tonight, Stan the Man has gone up a division. This is the super heavyweight uh, crowd. I'll get Richard Norton to talk a little bit later on. Of course, a few rule changes tonight as uh, we see Anthony the Abnormal making his way into a center ring. some out entrance and some outfit to do it in, are you Rob? What's happening over there now? There's, a, there's more showmanship going on there. I think it's one of Stan's guys, well, one of Stan's guys just uh, saying, listen, you're going to have to wear this helmet. That's the only way you're going to get protection from the Australian. He's trying to keep him a helmet <laughs> to put on. And I don't think they'll get any arguments from him either. <laughs> <laughs> we reckon Jimmy Thunder didn't have a bad build on him. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're asking here at the Sports and Entertainment Centre. Almost a packed house. There's not too many empty seats here tonight. And the fight to be over 12 two-minute rounds. A minute rest in between each round. And uh, you can judge by the sound behind us here at the moment in our commentary position. No love for this fellow.
I hope as an Australian watching an Australian make me second attempt at the world title, I want to see him knock this guy out tonight oh, too. I, yeah, I must confess I do. I mean, Stan's got 14 wins, no losses. He's got 10 knockouts. So let's hope this makes it number 11. Well, gentlemen, we're not biased at all, though, Bob, right? <laughs> Here we go, round one. Oh, Stan already, a nice left hook there, right off the bell. I don't think he liked that left hook right up in the first round. I don't think he almost liked that left hook one bit. The thing that worries me, what I've seen already, is uh, Elmore, when he kicks, he tends to drop both hands down when he lifts that head kick up, which is dangerous against somebody like Stan, who's got the uh, the speed to really score with that hook. Because everyone in the USA has been commenting on Stan's hand speed. He, he's ridiculously fast for a heavyweight. Oh, it's a nice powerful body kick there from Elmore. He's got that reach out, hasn't he? You can see the height advantage when he sticks it's that jab out. Stan he's not scoring with it, but... Stan is looking very, very confident, though. <laughs> Look at the eye on Stan Long and he's there. They call it tunnel vision, don't they? All you see is that other person, you can almost hear his breathing. When you hit him, you hear it affect him. There you go, Stan trying to get in and work that left hook in. If he gets inside those kicks and lands a couple of those left hooks, I, I think Elmore works. already knows that. See how he drops those hands when he kicks Elmore? That's going to be a bad news for him if Stan gets in with that hook. Especially in later rounds, yeah. There you go. Stan's favourite, that flying left hook, the Superman punch. I'd just like to mention at this point too, Rob, you mentioned about the, the crowd here this evening. I'd like to compliment the promoter, Chris Conus. He's done three shows in the last five months. He's gone from 2,500 at the Melbourne Town Hall, turned away 1,500. He went to 5,500 at the Festival Hall in November. And here we are tonight with a record Australian crowd of 7,200 people watching kickboxing here at the Entertainment Centre. It's still to come, Bob, too. It's a gamble he's taken on, and uh, I think it's worked. It's the only thing Stan's got to watch out there. Elmo likes to use that front leg. You know, he jabs with it a lot, and he's not too bad with it. Good combination of left and right kicks there. Stan spins out of that at the end of round one. End of round one. And uh, Stan Longanidis, uh, as Bob Jones said before, basically, what do we do, Richard? Basically, a little bit of tunnel vision. Eyes only for oh, one yeah, thing, but that's uh, it. All you got to worry about. Not the crowd, not the ring girls, not anything else, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just wondering uh, whether or not uh, Christopher's, uh, or uh, perhaps uh, Stan's corner should send the ring girls over and try and uh, psych the American out. Yeah. Aren't you a good ploy? Notice here again, as I said, Ruben Akides has flown over, especially to be in Stan's corner. Ruben trains, uh, is really only works three corners. Pete Cunningham, five-time world champion. Benny Akides, of course, who's undefeated world champion. And uh, now Stan the man. So uh, he's got the best in his corner. That's really an incredible compliment to Stan because of his record in America for the last 18 months. To get Ruben Akides to come out here and be in his corner yep. just shows how keen the Americans are to establish Stan as a, an Australian world champion. Oh, they love him. The last fights he's had have been such crowd pleasers. So. I think Stan's going to really start warming up. He's a good kicker, Stan. He's got great flexibility and really get those head kicks up, and he's very fast with his legs. Oh, there you go. Out of that weave comes that left hook. I think Dale Cook might have been right, Richard, about that intimidation. He looks like he doesn't want to know about He doesn't want to. Look at that. He's in trouble now. He didn't like that one too much. See, his eyes wide open then. I thought it was a show somebody that's that cool. I think that came as a bit of a shot for the American. I don't think he's ever struck one of these flying, uh, as you call the, uh, the Superman hook left hooks. That's for sure. <laughs> oh, they catch him. Plus, he would know Stan's record. He knows Stan's knocked out the last 11 opponents. He says he knows nothing about Stan. He's seen tapes on him. Why do you think he didn't want leg kicks? Because he it. saw what he could do with them. Also, talking of leg kicks, uh, Richard, they must lay a certain amount of leg kicks. No, no leg kicks whatsoever. None, they, none they, in this fight. They must throw eight kicks above the waist, otherwise they get penalised. Okay. They must be hard kicks, meaning they've got to be a definite attempt to score. And uh, as, as Bob said, if they don't reach the eight, they get penalised. We have uh, kick counters on the side to count the actual kicks. Well, it was a nice front leg round kick to the head by Elmore. Scored on Stan. I don't think anything's worrying Stan though, Richard. It doesn't look. He's just got. Oh, oh, no, that's oh he did left. top with a nice straight one then. He walked into that straight left, but it didn't seem to still worry him. You know, I mean, you know the one thing you can say about Stan above everything else, he can take a punch too. There's no doubt about that. 
it's going to take more than that. When you spar with people like Mike Weaver and Michael Dokes, you've got to be able to take a punch. Well, he rode a very strong straight left then, and uh, he didn't even pull him up. He came right in on it. Well, Anthony Elmore found the mark. Yeah, he certainly did. And again, there he goes. Once again, using that reach to advantage. That's it. And he, that's his style. He's got to throw those long kicks, long punches, and keep backing off. But I think that left hand started to intimidate him. Well, looking at that round, Richard Norton that would almost go the way of the American. Yeah, you'd probably have to say that, especially with that scoring straight, uh, straight left there. And the, he's been scoring with a couple of good um, front leg round kicks to the head. Bob Jones, uh, does that mean now that Stan's going to have to do a fair bit of work to the body? Well, get him tighter, it's get exactly him what I said earlier when you asked me prior to the fight that uh, Elmore, I think, is going to... He doesn't have a, lot, a big sting in his punches. He hasn't knocked a lot of people out, so he's got to keep away for the whole 12 rounds and take this on scoring points. Stan, I think, has got to get in and go for the knockout because he's not going to outpoint this guy. He's going to have to knock him out, I think, as the fight progresses. Yep, I agree with you, Bob, exactly. He's just got to get in and finish this one off. If this goes 12 rounds, if the judges are right on cue, I think it could go Elmore's way because of the point scoring. But, of course, it depends round by round. We've only seen two of 12 rounds. Well, Dan's also a smart fighter. He's got plenty of time to start working this out. Calls him into centre ring again. As we remember, he's had three times more fights than Stan. Elmore's had 30-odd fights, and Stan's only had just over 10. He's so, had the belt uh, since uh, 84. His kicks are going a little bit low, too, there off that front foot. Dave Hitchcock's a good referee, so he'll probably pick up anything that's a deliberate foul. Yep. He lets the accidental ones go a bit. There you go. There's Stan moving in now. Nice combination. You see Elmore's eyes open wide when he comes in on him yeah. like that. Understandable, Ooh. I guess, Rob. Look straight at the referee. I don't <laughs> know what he was looking for. <laughs> referee, help, help. Ooh, there he goes. He's starting to really line him up now. As you said, Bob, if Elmore is uh, exposed to intimidation, that's going to certainly do it to him. I think Bob Stan's just going to have to get in and start the pulling his way in underneath. Oh, look, Elmore complaining now about a low kick. He's done enough of it himself already. What's happening at the moment, Elmore just relying on that straight left jab. He doesn't want to move in and, and try power, does he? You can see he's a yeah. fox. He's just jabbing and keeping his keeping his timing, keeping his stand out. Nice left leg roundhouse score there. As you said, he's a points fighter. He's just going to try and work those points up. Stan's going with a nice stomach kick there off the front leg. Could be real dangerous if Stan tires. If Stan hasn't been doing his, his homework and uh, if he tires at all, we can... Oh, oh, oh that, that had a hit him. That would have frightened the tail, I tell him. Well, you know, the fight he had with Dina Holmesy was a good one for Stan. It was only recently in the States when he won the Intercontinental. That went 10 rounds. And Stan was saying it was great for him to do. He could have taken the guy out earlier with leg kicks, but they decided to let the crowd see what he could really do. And uh, I think it was a good tester for Stan to show that he could go the distance rather than knocking everybody out yeah, first because, or second because round. Previously, that was 11 knockouts in the first or second round. Exactly. So he needed 10 rounds before this fight. And he needs some distance fights before he has a go at Alexio, too, before we didn't bring Dex Dennis Alexio into the country. Stan needs some distance fights. But he took that round, I think, with some very solid shots. I, you know, he was close, but I, if I was judging, I would have made that 2019 Stan's way because he, he got some good right-hand shots and some good left-body shots in there. Yep, very aggressive. And they were both very even on their kick scoring then, so I think Stan took a slight edge there. But he needs it, because uh, almost certainly scoring points as well, all the way along the line. Well, yeah, and that's what it's about, isn't it? Without a knockout. the thing too, Richard, uh, drawing a line through the fight that Stan had the last time with uh, Charles Archie out here in Australia, is that this guy here, at least when he lobs one on him, he comes straight back at him. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, his eyes do widen, of course, when he does it, but he does <laughs> at least come back. But I guess anyone would, wouldn't they? Uh, well, maybe it might be... Uh, you know, uh, now it's an offset towards Stan to say, listen, you can't hurt me. Yep, I mean, he's fighting his fight, isn't he? It's just like you said, Bob, in the beginning, he's going to stay away. Down. He's going to use his reach, which is what he's doing. He'd be foolish to go in and really try and mix it up in close quarters with Stan. Round the floor. So a lot of height to get up, isn't it, Rob? Six foot four and a half from uh, five ten. Giving a lot away. It's also, like, and incredible well, weight advantage, uh, like you said. Plus, you've got to you've got to look at the fact too that the height difference in these two people. Stan's got to throw a minimum of eight kicks to the waist. Well, in comparison to what the two guys are doing, there's an 18 inch, 24 inch range there. Mm -hmm. So it's much, so much easier for Elmore just to stick the foot out at waist height. Stan's got to really work just to kick to the waist height. Yep. 
I mean, he is capable of kicking Elmore fair in the face, but uh, kick after kick, round after work. round, it's a lot more work all the time having to load that little bit extra height. Yep, without a doubt. That's it! That's it! Come on, Elmore not scoring quite so well now with that left. Stan's uh, sort of got that worked out a little bit now. He can pick it up. Oh, he got hit with a great right cross, though. Oh, Elmore, look at he wants everything out, doesn't he? Help me, Rev. <laughs> I think that information I got from the world middleweight champion, Dale Cook, was right on too. So. He's looking like he doesn't want to be in the ring already. When Stan jumps him, he's looking for the ref to help him. There goes that looping... Uh... American's corner offering plenty of encouragement. I think the most successful thing Anthony Elmore has done in this country, if you look at the feel of this crowd right now, the 7,002 people, he's put them right to the peak of anticipation. Everyone sure has. Oh! Stan nearly hit him there with a nice rising left uppercut. The Americans come back at him again. Oh, oh again. Stan. There you go, that's what we're oh, on. Look at him, he's going to start. Stan's scoring well then, getting starting to get that aggressive. Oh, a nice round for Stan to finish off then. I get the impression, uh, Bob Jones, that the longer this fight goes, uh, the better chance Stan Longanides has got to take this title. Uh, no, I'm worried about the fight going too long because Elmore may come back stronger towards the end. You, you can't tell. Uh, I'd rather see, I'd rather see Stan knock him out this round. I think we'd all like to see that, but I just get that impression. Every, every time the American's in trouble, Richard, he looks straight to the referee or looks straight to his corner as if he's ready to complain or something's wrong. Well, you know, again, he's probably fighting his fight. He's, he doesn't particularly have a powerful punch the way I see it. He's probably used to going the distance, and his tactics are to just outscore the other person. Here's a rerun here on uh, some excitement in that last round. Front kick by Elmore. There's that left. Stan with the left. And Which Elmore's starting to look like he doesn't want to be there. He wants to grab on straight away. He doesn't like it when that distance is closed. He likes to have Stan at the distance that he wants. There's Ruben Urquidez, uh, probably, probably the biggest trainer in the world, giving Stan information of what to do during that rest period. There's Stan starting to unwind with some of those nice front leg round kicks. There you go, he tried one of those boot-to-boot -boot sweeps on that particular instant to set up that uh, left. Oh, starting to put a bit of sting in those kicks now, Stan. He's starting to unwind them. Elmore come back with a nice front kick down himself, puts down a little bit off balance. Stan looking very confident. They're like eye line to eye line. I think Stan's got a few point pluses on Elmore. You know, just that stronger sight, that tunnel vision is looking a lot stronger from Stan. He certainly looks a lot more composed. Elmore's still scoring well with that front leg, though. He scores Scoring the mid kick. Richard, quite, uh, quite yep. a few occasions. Stan like now it. starting to get a little bit of a mark across the front there. And they, as I said, they tell on you too. They just keep accumulating. You just can't shake them off as quickly as a lot of other punches. Or in this case, kicks. Oh, there you go. Stan trying to loop over the top. Bit of a slip there. Almost still getting back into it though, isn't yeah, he? He's uh, come back. He's got some fire in him the still. Going again. The same, a bit of a worry. The longer he keeps his fight going, could be a problem on uh, the Australian end with the judges. Stan obviously just trying to work out how to get around that reach. Stan just doesn't seem to be worrying as much as Elmore. When you look at the two in close, yeah. when it gets, when it gets, yeah. when the tough get going, as they say, you know. Oh, there he goes. That's what worries Elmore most. Those looping lefts and rights. I think I might have Stan was a little, a little bit worried. Then. then yes, the first thing he did was uh, put the glove to the eye. Got a bit of a right uh, red mark on the right side of his forehead there. Oh, hit him again with the right then. And the legs are so much more important in this sport, even so much more than Western Bo than uh, Queensbury boxing. Uh, you've, you've got to really get as much rest as you can on those legs between the rounds. But I guess, with, as I said, with without the fights, leg kicks, maybe you know he thinks yeah. he doesn't need it. All right, the referee, uh, David Hitchcock, there at the moment, uh, getting the corner just waiting a little bit more time out until they tape up the toes. I think of uh, Anthony Elmore. No, it's okay. Round six.
Dave Hedgecock letting him go for round it. Round six of the 12 rounder. He's almost scoring again with that, uh, that midsection kick out the front leg. Like to get all my side on, didn't he, Bob? You know, it's like one of the older sort of styles of the PKA fighting. Plus, he did a lot of Shotokan. Uh, they said earlier he started in Japanese Shotokan training, which is a very side on martial art fighting style. But uh, Bill Wallace did that style very successfully, oh, fighting side on. The best. But Stan, to me, looks more like a modern day fighter. He's a fighter of the 90s with the international rules, more frontal stance. Come on, all he does is look around to the ref and a clinch. What's the story? Elmore's corner, Ooh. yelling out for him to just get those kicks in. There you go. Come on, Stan. Let him go. Score with a few nice hands there. Elmore again every time he looks at the ref. He wants Dave to drag it up. Ooh. Keeps hanging on He's behind the net. Really mixing it up. Stan's loading up some solid punches, Richard. I heard a bit of a rumor that he's bruised his hand in that last fight in America, but uh, he's punching very hard. He's punching hard at the moment. Yeah, he did bruise his right hand. He's having a lot of massage work and everything done on it. But it seems to be okay. Look at Elmore with those jabs. I, yeah. There's an intimidated man right now. He just wants to stay way over this side of the ring and jab. Tell you what, he's scoring with them, though. Look at him. Look at him around. Look at him grabbing them. He's pulling him down the back of the neck there. What's worrying me now, Richard, is he looks like he's getting away from Stan's over loop left. You know, he's uh, it's missing. He's trying now. to work it out. He keeps that, that, that arm out and keeps jamming it as it comes over. Well, I harken back to what I was saying before, Richard. I think uh, if Stan's going to do any damage here, he's going to have to get in underneath. He's got to get try in. And block off those kicks that are coming from the champion. And uh, he's proved then if he can load up the big bombs and let them uh, find the mark. I think, uh, I think our friend from the United States is going to have a few problems. I think that's the thing. Sam's just got to find his mark. I mean, he's really looping that right hand over in the case of that left, but he's just got to get out of that, that rangy reach of Elmore's. Elmore's keeps, keeps those hands extended. As you can see here, as soon as they clinch, while well, you almost saw in the playback, Elmore grabs the back and they can pull Stan down. And then looks to Dave. And looks to the ref to pull it up. Again, Bob, still not sitting down in the corner, so the American uh, not giving those legs a rest at all. No, he doesn't seem to be worrying him. He's, he's moving. He's, he's still moving well on his legs. He hasn't been caught with a real hard bang yet, but uh, I think when Stan does get one of these bombs in, but it's halfway through the fight right now. We've only got 50% to go, and uh, he looks like he's sticking right on fight plan. Yep. Stan's going to have to hit him and hurt him in the next couple of rounds. I think so. Uh, to rattle him up. He's got a good counter, Elmore. You're going to hand it to him. He knows how to use that, that uh, left leg of his. Stand up to him quite as well with the same sort of return kick. There you go. Attempting to boot to boot to offset Elmore's balance. Still got shin to shin that time, but Hitchcock picked up on it. <laughs> well, I wasn't going to dob him in. <laughs> I thought you jumped off the bandwagon fairly quickly, didn't you, too? Stan is looking for a way to get in past that, that reach of Elmore's. Very side on, Bobby, the American. Well, it's making it harder for Stan to get in because he's turning side on and he's just covering both hands over the chest. So Stan's really got to go around the block to hit him. Yeah. He's got to go around the block. But I guess that's what 30 fights has taught him. He's around the block now. Almost got around the corner. Again, just having trouble. That's Elmore just sticks his arms out and pushes him away again with that long reach of his. He's counting very quickly on Stan's lead leg, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, very quickly. Used to that. Stan's slipping a few of those long jabs now. American uh, complaining to the referee there, but... Uh, nice, straight, long-reaching jab there by Stan. He's scoring on the ribs of Elmore.
Stan just trying to find a way in there. Yeah, Stan just having a bit of trouble getting through, uh, you know, getting through that range because Elmore is definitely countering very well with that front leg. That's seven rounds completed. We're past halfway, so uh, I don't like the format it's falling into. I mean, Stan is definitely the stronger fighter of the two, but Elmore is just using that experience of uh, all the just fights he's had around points. the world, and he's just going on the points. He doesn't care about how, who can bang the hardest. He just knows, well, it looks like he knows how to pull this fight off for himself. And I'm a little bit worried. If this keeps going on this format, it just might roll into the judge decision his way on scoring points. Look at this. Look at Elmore trying to psych out. He's back in the center of the ring. <laughs> he's trying to use a little bit of psychology here, Rob. <laughs> No matter what you try once you're out there, you're on your own, Richard. You are indeed. Because no one can help you. If it works, good luck to you. Yep. Those but punches, uh, those strong bangs that intimidated Elmore in the early go. fights are not happening now. Yeah. He's, he's catching them on the arms and on the chest rather than the jaw. Jamming them. So now he's got his chin out of the way. Yeah. He's, uh, he looks like he's, he's handling the fight so far, which is a... Right, Stan Longanides, the number one contender for this uh, world super heavyweight title, has a little bit of work to do as he goes to work and on the American like now. See, once again, Elmer pulling him down, then punching off that, you know? Trying a step up side kick there from Elmore. Stan trying a boot to boot. That's it. Stan looking like he's getting a bit impatient now with the whole situation. Once again, the back of the neck pulling him down all the time. Another step up sidekick from Elmore. Elmore's picked up a lot more confidence in the last two rounds. Yeah, the, eye, the eye line's changed. He's he has more indeed. confidence in the eyes. He's got control of the There you go, Stan hit him with a short left then. He's going in. Elmore once again leaning on him, looking to the ref, saying, Help me, ref. Oh, oh. I don't know. I don't know. The stage you might be entitled to do that. Maybe he doesn't realize that the rules are that you can clinch and keep on punching. <laughs> That step up side kick again. He uses that quite well. He's scoring with that now as opposed to the round kick. Oh, this time, caught him with a couple. Elmore again hanging on the back of neck and using uppercuts. Dave Hedgecock warning him, rightfully so. Holding the back of neck and driving those uppercuts. And again, just still trying to work out a way to get past that reach of Elmore. It's a nice shot there using our, what is it, our karate can? Well, we can. call it our karate can for the night. <laughs> and at the moment, the American answering everything that the Australian's throwing at him. I hate that, Rob, I hate that. I know. <laughs> I think we all do, but uh, I think we've got to be a little bit realistic too, Bob. Yeah, he's, uh, his experience is showing through now. They learn a lot in over 30 fights, and he's using everything to his advantage. It's not the Australian way. You can see the audience doesn't like that. As soon as a clinch comes, he doesn't want to mix it with a hard shot. Puts a shots. hand on the back of the neck, clinches, even threw some uppercuts after it. But, uh, yeah. And then didn't like being reprimanded by Dave Hitchcock for holding on and uppercutting at the same time. Exactly. There's Ruben now in stands here. Well, to save this fight, what's he going to do, Richard? Well, again, he's just got to get past that reach. He's got to stop uh, Elmore jamming him like he is and just land a couple of those looping rights or lefts. As you can see by the playback here, Elmore, because of his height, Stan likes to get in very low, but Elmore just lays on him, virtually lays on his back. Of course, that gives a ref only one option, that's to break it. Yeah. Well, his most uh, lethal weapon at the moment taken away from him, of Second course. Down. Yep, his leg kicks. Round nine. So round nine of this 12-round fight, Four rounds has uh, the Australian stand the man Longanides to try and stand trying to get his kicks the out there. There's four gone already. He's well aware of the eight kick count. Kick for kick now at the moment. Elmore very quick to throw that countering front leg kick. There you go. Look at the speed of Stan's kicks, and I wonder if Ruben might have. Uh, Asking the pump his eight kicks out yep. and get in and start getting in for hand shots. Get in for the hand shots, yeah. Normal still getting their height on those kicks. He's finding the mark. Yep, find the mark right in the side of Stan's head there. That couple of low ones there, Bob. I don't know what you say though. Some of those front leg round kicks are coming low on Stan. 
And also that, that big loop and left hook. Now he's not placing it. He's starting to swing it. Yep. Both trying sweeps now, trying to counter each yeah. other with those low leg sweeps. Stan trying it for that straight left underneath into the rib area. Again, that high lab just grazed the front oh. of Stan's face. There's Stan trying to get in now, trying to get around that reach. Now the American trying to answer the Australian with the uh, bullocking tactics and stand the man long and works on the shin, follows oh, it up with a looping left. Big hand. looping left, missed the mark unfortunately. Oh, kind of uppercut oh, combination, by no more hitting with him. Well, he's kept his title, Bob Jones, for the last eight years, so... Uh, well... Yeah, I was starting to come back with a bit of aggression off the point. Had a go three years ago with uh, Garcia from New Mexico and come a draw. And uh, I think all Australian fans were just really hoping Stan could get around, that, get around the corner and catch Elmore on the chin. He was doing it early. He caught him with a couple of solid punches in the first few rounds. But Elmore now is uh, running the fight his way. Yeah, I think he is too. He's even getting a little bit of uh, work after the clinches now. Creating a bit of distance and coming back with some good solid punches. I just can't work out why Stan is not stinging him like in the first couple of rounds. I don't know, maybe that bruised hand starting to play. I'm not looking for excuses, but maybe his bruised hands pulled his power back a bit, like the same as Jeff Fennick problem. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's what he's got to rely on, isn't it? You know, he's been putting, he put some sting into the first few, and uh, it's very possibly upset it a bit. Second up. Well, three rounds left for uh, Stan Longanides against uh, Anthony the Ant Elmore from the United States of America. The title holder with uh, the height and reach advantage, which is just starting to tell in my books against the Australian. Ooh, nice scoring round, midsection kick there from Stan. Stan trying to work around again, trying to work out how to get right past that reach of Elmore. I would have thought Stan would have crowded just a little bit more and try and smother Elmore's kicks, you know? I think that's what he has to do. He's got to get in, pass that jab and just smother those kicks, just like he's doing now. But unfortunately with Elmore, the one, one that little altercation there. See, they're still banging the chest and shoulder. You just need one of them to land on the chin because they were very powerful shots, but uh, I'm a bit afraid Elmore is putting his shoulder in the right spot. They stand with that uh, looping overhand right. Almost good, but not enough. Elmore still sticking that jab out in the face. There's nothing in you know, anything Elmore's throwing. There's nothing in his jabs, there's nothing in his kicks, but uh, there's no they're scoring points. They're scoring, Bob, aren't they? they're scoring points. No more complaining a little bit about those boot to boot kicks, but they're in the rules. Well, I mean, he's standing up and oh. resting. He's standing up and resting between the rounds, and he's standing up and resting during the rounds, you know? But he's making his kicks, and he's putting yeah. everything in the right place. So. He's fighting his fight. Almost corner having a fit because uh, Stan's kicking a little bit lower there. Come on, Stan, go for it. Stan just trying to get inside now with that looping left hand. Well, in the round 10. Elmore to me looks tired, but he just keeps doing a machine-like job. He's got the process down and he's repeating it. I think you summed it up fairly well, Bob. Well, you generally said there was not a lot of power in what he's doing, but that left hand keeps flicking out all the time into Stan's face. And, I mean, there's no marks all over the Australian's face, but they're scoring. Yeah, they're scoring. That's the whole problem. The front leg's scoring and the front jab is scoring. Oh, I just got a kick from Judy under the table, too. And for the elbow, beckoning the Australian to come out into centre ring for round 11. Stan's got to really pull two, something out of the bag two here. Two rounds to go. Can Stan get around that corner and get past those two jamming arms? Is the left hook slightly around the corner. 
There's a run missed. Almost there, almost landed with that hook. He's just got to get in there just like that. He's got to keep the pressure on. There he goes again. Of course, he's still missing. He's still missing with that overhand right. Got to get inside him. You can see his, what he's thinking. Got to get inside there to get that left-right combination. And he's got to work harder. He's got, got the crowd behind him. Now, there he goes. He hit him with a nice left hook that time. Almost still coming back, though, with his own counters. There's no doubt about that. Nice straight jab for the rib again from Stan. Stan's corner yelling out, double up, double up. Got to keep the pressure on now. There again. That was that looping left hook. Down the mark to the top of the forehead, but I think it'd like to be, uh, Stan would like it to be flush on the chin. At the I moment. think he would like that very much. Crown getting behind, obviously, you can hear it goes. Stan, there's a chance. Elmore coming back with a combination. Hit him with a nice left hook that time. He needs to double those up. He needs to keep that sort of pressure on. That's when he's got to fire a bit of power downstairs, Bobby, with his arms. It's all from the elbows. There's no real heavy uh, depth in those shots from the American. No, he's uh, he's playing real safe. He's not even overextending on anything. He's just uh, keeping Stan at bay. So Stan's got to get in and keep the pressure on. Elmore bleeding a little bit. He's Elmore a couple of on the mouth, but not enough. Well, we watched Stan Longanides come to his corner. He certainly is in no way distressed. Neither is the American for that matter, but I think... Uh, well, certainly nothing's hurting him on tactics. Of the Elmore, Elmore fights like a sparring session, you know? He's pretty... Yeah, he, I mean, like I said, I've seen Stan fight Mike Weaver. If he can take jabs off Weaver, he can take him off anyone. Stan's not bothered by that. The problem is how do you get around them? Second down. Yes, I don't know about your scorecard, Richard, but uh, oh, for me yeah. it doesn't look good for Stan. Yeah. Five right. points go. Stan just got to get in and do the job on this round. Stan's got to go just flat out. If he can do two minutes flat out. Got to get in there. He doesn't have time to stand back now. If he could just get in and crowd him and stop Elmore from making eight kicks, there could be some penalty points on Elmore's kicks. Or well, either way, but this would be a good round for Stan to crowd and try and swamp Elmore's legs, which he's done. Elmore hasn't thrown any kicks yet. There's a, an attempt at a kick. There's a left. Elmore felt that one. got to get in to stop that kick from coming up. He's got to double those hooks up. He's got to just double them up. He's lit that second token kick, third token kick. Come on, get behind Stan Larry. There's last round. Come on, Melbourne. He's got to get in there, more. He's got to get in. He's got to score with that. It was an uppercut, a right uppercut then, but still not enough to do it. Plenty of daylight between uh, the American and uh, Stan the Mad Long and Edies. And... Stan's got to do more. He's got to do more at this stage. The Australians of my co-commentators and uh, Bob Jones and Richard Norton at the moment. Yeah, we don't willing have to stay at the moment, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, the only thing we rely on now is uh, the kick count. Maybe one of them has gone unstuck on the kick count, but that also could go against us as well. Yeah, almost kept yeah, almost out. kept a lot of kicks up. I wouldn't think he's been short in any he's rounds. Still scoring with that straight left time. jab. Yeah. 30 seconds to go. 30 seconds left in the fight. Come on, Stan. You've got to get in there and do the job. Go. 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 coming back with plenty of fire. Got to hand it to him. He's scoring the school with more punches at this stage. Got to be only a few seconds left in this one. That's it. There's the bell to win the fight. Well, we'll see what the judges have got to say. The crowd seemed pretty reserved, Bob. I'm not so sure whether they've made up their minds. Well, the American fairly confident. Well, uh... We'll just have to await the judges' scorecards. Ladies and gentlemen, Judge Les Enyos gives it 1-1 for Elmore. 1-1-7, one, one, Lodgerinas.
The card by Jamal Hassan gives it 117 Lajadigas, 119 Elmore. The final card, the deciding card, Judge Peter Rowe gives it 111 to Elmore. 119 Lajadigas. Well, you can see the crowd reaction, you can see the reaction. Super heavyweight champion. Well, the world champion, we have a new world champion. Stan Longinides has taken the title away from Anthony Elmore. I must admit, I am one of the most surprised people ringside. I certainly was bagging for the Australian, but at the same time, I've got two gentlemen sitting beside me at the moment that are quite stunned. That's the decision we got to get. Judges, referees for that purpose. Anthony Elmore is certainly not happy with the decision. His trainers are also not happy with the decision. Um, and we're sitting here doing the commentators with the three professional judges out there doing the judging. Well, the judging uh, panel seemed fit to uh, award the world title fight to uh, the Australian stand the man Longanides. As uh, we look in centre ring at the moment, you can see Stan on camera. Stan a very happy man. Anyway, look at him. Very emotional at the moment in the ring. This is a dream come true for Stan. Especially without the, especially without the leg kick. Stan, he was a big man. He was difficult. You couldn't get, really get to him. Anthony's got a lot of experience behind him. He's got a lot of experience and he's good at smothering and making other fighters look terrible. And it's not the way I would have liked to have won, but... Winning is what counts. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank a lot of people that helped me throughout my career. I want to thank everyone, my, my trainer from the Jet Center, Ruben Akides, everyone throughout the years that's, that's trained with me. I'm talking about everyone, Paul Fifield, Dave Hedgecock, Dana Goodson, everyone involved, Lee, everybody. My, my personal manager, Nick Canos, Lee Michaels, but most of all, I want to thank someone very special to me, someone that's my best friend and he's with me all the time, whether I'm a winner or loser. And I'm talking about my Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ. Thank you. Uh, when I come in from America, I came to bring class, style, and excitement. Um, I'm not the kind of person that feels commiserate or sad by a decision. This is something that you have to know in your heart who is the real champion. If At any rate, at any rate, I'm sure that, that prior to having this fight, I filed an official letter of protest because there was some underhanded dealing that was done before the fight. And I think that there is some underhanded dealing that was done after the fight, but I'm not going to make excuses. Uh, what I'd like to do is I'd like to end this by saying thank you all very much. And I'd like to say this here, regardless of the circumstances, I am so proud that you all here in this community support kickboxing. I love kickboxing, and I try to bring something to the game. You're wonderful for supporting kickboxing. Thank you very much. Well, Anthony Elmore, uh, I, th I think tonight certainly won a lot of fans. Uh Take it away, we have a new world champion, a world yeah, yeah, super I'm heavyweight happy. champion. I'm so happy for Stan, you know, it's, it's great. He's a, he's a wonderful guy and it's a dream come true. Stan the Man Longanides, the new super heavyweight world title holder. He's defeated Anthony the Amp Elmore from the United States of America for the title. Congratulations to Stan, congratulations to all those concerned. We hope you've enjoyed what you've seen here at the Sports and Entertainment Centre uh, tonight. We've certainly enjoyed it. It's been a great night of kickboxing.
And uh, for, uh, as I only reiterate by saying before, Anthony Elmore, you've certainly won a lot of fans when you've left this ring tonight. From us all here, from my co-commentators, from, uh, of course, Richard Norton and Bob Jones, we hope you've enjoyed the action. Thank you, Rob. And Australia's new world kickboxing champion, Stan Longanides, relinquished his new crown today after much controversy from Sunday night's split points decision in his favour. The belt now is in a freeze state and a rematch against American Anthony Elmore is planned for July. I believe, for the dignity of myself, the sport and my fans, this is the only way it should work out.